Welcome to the video series, Six Steps to IT Documentation. My name is Rachel Hutchinson and I will be guiding you through the server, clients, software and licenses and services areas in the following videos to demonstrate how I do it can help you to fully document your IT infrastructure. In the previous parts of the series, we covered the topics infrastructure and networks. We created two branches, including floors and rooms, built the first server cabinet, installed a switch and router in it, and documented the cabling from switch to the one line. We looked at how iDoIt can be used as an IP address management system, how new infrastructure can be imported quickly and easily via a CSV file, and how the floor plan add-on can be used to get an overview of floors and rooms, including YLAN illumination. In today's part, we will build on existing documentation and focus on server documentation. We will not only show you how to document physical servers, but also your virtual machines. In companies, Servers ensure the implementation and operation of business critical applications, services and processes. It is therefore particularly important that in the event of a fault, IT personnel have complete access to information about the systems used, the software installed and the people responsible, including escalation levels, in order to rectify faults as quickly as possible. Let's have a look at the live demo. Although we are focusing on the topic of servers today, we will start with the creation of the software. After all, every server needs an operating system. In the menu item software, we create a new operating system called Microsoft Server 2019 and save our object. We now need a license for this operating system. We create this with the designation Microsoft Server 2019 Standard. In the folder Licenses, we can create a new license key. Here we have the possibility to create a key as a single license or volume license. Since we are also entitled to operate two virtual machines with a Server 2019 Standard license, we select Volume License and enter our key. This completes our preparation and we can now create our first server. A good IT documentation consists of the exact information necessary. That's why it is important to analyse in advance exactly which information we actually need. This information is used to create a customised documentation plan that prevents you from wasting time documenting irrelevant information. In the case of a server, system characteristics such as CPU, RAM, hard disk space and the software and services installed and running on it are particularly important to us. However, which sound and graphics card the server has adds little value to most people. Therefore, we now customise our server object according to our requirements and remove superfluous properties. Here is the before-after comparison, which already looks much tidier. After we have named our server, we can add information as properties. Under the category Accounting, we can enter all the general details of the inventory and the procurement process. In addition to inventory and cost recording, this overview can also be used to get an overview of whether and for how long a warranty still exists. Under Contact Assignment, we can select people and organisations and assign them different roles. This provides accurate information about who, for example, is a supplier, contractor, user or administrator. Escalation stages can also be mapped with just a few clicks. If you have concluded maintenance contracts with organisations or service providers, you can store these directly under Contract Assignment. Then you're able to open up the contract contents at any time and inform yourself about terms and notice periods. 
Under the category CPU, we enter the name of our physical processor, including the cores and frequency. For the host address, we proceed as before with our switch and router. We select our network, define a static IP, and check that it is not already occupied by another device. With memory, we define the number of memory banks, select the manufacturer and type, and specify the capacity. The total capacity is calculated automatically. In order to link the newly created operating system with our server, we can select it by clicking on the magnifying glass icon. Then we select our volume license and a free key. For a high level of long-term IT security, it's also recommended to document the version as systems that have not been updated can be detected immediately. This concludes the basis server documentation. We have licensed a Windows Server 2019 with the standard version. This means we can run a host and up to two virtual machines on it. I do it already offers a pre-configured object type that we can use. In order to achieve this, we again enter all necessary information such as CPU, RAM and operating system. The only difference is that we now switch to the virtual machine folder in the left navigation. Here we activate the object as a virtual machine, select our server as host and specify which hypervisor is used for virtualization. If we now open up our server object again, we will find our virtual machine in the category Guest Systems. In addition, we can check in the object vitality which resources are consumed and use this information when we plan to create new virtual machines. We already talked about how important documentation of the servers is. If your systems fail or your network is disturbed, it is recommended to save a copy of your documentation externally or as a hard copy. With the documents add-on, in a few clicks we can create PDF documents from the existing information. These documents automatically contain all the information about our devices. Now we have the possibility to create new document templates and apply them to existing devices. We have prepared a corresponding template here. This contains all the information about the server object types and displays them in the desired form. The advantage is that we can apply this template to any server and thus create documents for all our servers within minutes. This not only works for servers but for all object types. Whether you want to create service manuals, an emergency manual or handover and transfer protocols for notebooks, smartphones or other IT devices the possibilities are virtually unlimited. Often, it's not only the current state of your IT landscape that you want to know about, but you also want to be able to track changes. This is because changes to systems and configurations can affect services and applications. Let's take another look at our server. Every change to the configuration is saved in the iDoIt logbook. We can open it by clicking on the icon in the respective object or via extras to CMDB to logbook. In addition, we also have various filtering options here to limit the time period, for example. The logbook thus provides administrators with optimum support in determining the causes of malfunctions. Let's summarize our current configurations again. Today we have been working on the documentation of physical and virtual servers. For this purpose, we created a new operating system as well as a license and adapted the server object according to our requirements. When we created the server, we linked it to the operating system and license and integrated it into the network we already created. We also showed you how to create emergency manuals and handover protocols with the help of the documents add-on. To be able to track all changes, the logbook can be used and the lists can be filtered as required. 
With interfaces to various tools and directory services, you can create and update devices and users automatically. I would be happy if you join us for the fourth part of our series, where we show you how to organise and implement the documentation of PC workstations. If you have any questions about iDoit, please contact us at sales at iDoit.com.